Good day, we're, everybody. We're welcome starting to, it up. <laughs> welcome to Dead Baby Bear Polar Vortex fucking massive depression nervous breakdown episode two. This is the fuck. <laughs> this is the. Uh, this is the. This is, you know how uh, TV shows uh, once a year have like a super serious. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was literally have, thinking that. Have a super serious episode. This should be ours where it's like Kathleen and Sean really get down and dirty this episode. Nothing funny happens. It's all just horrific trauma. Kathleen cries at the start and the end. I literally thought that too. I'm like, we should do like a sitcom, very special episode and then have like, uh, like some like Webster character at the end being like, if you need help, call the suicide hotline. <laughs> There's, there's something about living in a place that's minus 35 or minus 40 um, for a two week stretch during a lockdown. That's just like, you don't feel human. No, the you lockdown like is on Mars. crazy. Because I remember them, like, I remember even like, I think it was Trudeau said, like, we're in for a very long, shitty winter, people. It's going to get bad. Like, it's not just the virus. It's going to fuck with us mentally. And it really is like, I can't even go outside to walk my dogs because they it's too cold for them. Like we have to go to a parkade, like white trash. <laughs> Can you imagine being Trudeau? Like there's not oh. many people, there's not many good looking people as hated as he is. You know? It's like, so ridiculous. Like, I, I had to- why, um, would you, why would you get into politics or acting, you know, or, cause I mean, if you're a good looking person who's an accountant, people just like you for your whole life. But yeah. if, as soon as you get into politics, people are like, I don't give a fuck about his jawline. That guy ruined my life. <laughs> I deactivated my Facebook account this week because I I just thank you very much to my secretary. He made my sheet. Um, <laughs> I, uh, that Canadian guy, Glenn Foster, and then Alan Park, uh, another oh. headliner who really loves conspiracy theories. Um, they both were coming at me telling how like, it's all Trudeau's fault. It's all... And then Alan Park was talking about how we're muzzling ourselves with these masks. And I'm like, I'm fucking deactivating this awful thing. Maybe till past the spring, but like I'm, I'm in such a bad headspace. I don't need that Canadian guy telling me how bad Trudeau is doing when like that guy can't even like get out of a bachelor apartment. You know what I mean? Like, it's so annoying when these people that have absolutely no success in their lives get on Facebook and they're like, well, this is what Trudeau's doing wrong. And this is why he's a piece of shit. And it's just like, well, why don't you show that you've done something? Like, <laughs> you've done nothing. Sorry, that's yeah, my rant. That's okay. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> it's, I, that's why, that's why you're braver than me. You know, like you, you will actually post on these places. I, I just post on my own profile. I don't go to anyone else's. I don't I don't get into anyone else's comments. I just post on my own page and then they all flock in and get all stupid and talk about like, oh, well, the reason why New Zealand was able to control this because they're an island. Canada has like no, but there's no reason why it should be out of control in Canada. Well, yeah, the UK is an island, right? Yeah. I mean, there's other islands, right? And I don't know who fucking knows. It's so goddamn cold and depressing here, you know? Can't and literally you can't even fucking go into a burger king you know? <laughs> you're sitting outside of a burger king like why can't i like I, i'm in i'm like i wish i could go inside that burger king and eat next to their fake fucking fireplace you know it's so they have sad. all dressed chicken nuggets there now of course they do of course those fucking losers i like and i'm i'm trying to find a job but I, and then i'm like you know like I'm trying to think of like how bad of an employee I was, you know, like I was a pretty hard worker, but I was also really stupid. Like I was an absent minded. I remember there was one time there's like when you work at a chemical plant, mm -hmm. there's there's a sort of unwritten code where no matter what goes wrong on shift, you try to deal with it in house like you don't you don't write it up and you try to make it go away. Yeah. And there was one time where there was like a loaded rail car filled with sodium chlorate. And I was, um, I don't know how it happened really, but I, I, I ran it through the gate in a shuttle wagon. I ran the rail car through the gate. And then when I tried to stop, it hit like one of the switches and it tipped over. Like the entire rail car tipped. Oh no. Like a, and, like and a train, like a choo-choo train? 
Yeah, like a choo-choo train rail car. That's and huge. That was pretty huge. And I was just like, whoa. Um, so then I, I went back in and they're like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We have to park all of our trucks in front of the admin building so that people can't see what's going on here. So they were like, okay, yeah, let's just pretend. So we had to pretend that there was some kind of a leak in front of the admin building. Everybody parked their trucks in front of the windows and half of the crew pretended that they were fixing a non-existent leak. And the other half went and tried to get this rail car um, tipped back up and onto the tracks. Oh man! And I was just like, what the fuck? What, you know, it was one of those ones where I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> I don't belong. I should just be at home sleeping. I should. I don't have any skills. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, but they put like know. very dangerous things in the hands of people that aren't trained to do it. Like, I had friends in high school that were the captains of the submarines in the West Edmonton Mall. You know how they used to have those submarines that went around, and they were the captains, like these sixteen-year-old boys, and like they'd be probably pretty stoned. <laughs> like they, and then. It, that it wasn't like simple like they had to do some stuff because it would fall off the tracks too and then people would be stuck for like two hours in that submarine just like waiting for a boat to come along because scuba drivers had to come along and put it back on i just thought it was so funny like that that those are the people that are running the rides those are the people that are driving the oil trucks that are going to spill and it, like you have no training for this stuff and you you just were like oh i'll make it and then it didn't work out. well it was just a job that i'd done a million times so i was like you know i i'm so absent-minded that i just like you know uh i just wasn't even thinking until it was happening like i was yeah. just like thinking about something else and then all of a sudden i'm like hey there's a rail car tipping over uh oh <laughs> <laughs> then we got the rail car back on and then moved the trucks and then nobody talked about it. Like it was just, so it's kind of a cool thing that happens in industrial life <laughs> where everybody just chips in to make somebody else's gigantic mistake disappear. And then nobody talks about it. It's like, Oh, well, yep. because nobody wants a mistake because they could all get fired. Well, no, they could have been like, Hey, you did this. You're fired um but they were like oh well you know we'll cover for this guy's mistakes and then he owes me one you know and then you know if something happens to me then he's not going to rat me out and then you end up you know it's the same thing that happens with police unions right like i fuck up then you fuck up then he fucks up and now we're a police station filled with people that could fucking get each other fired if they wanted to and that's where you know it's just this giant wall of secrecy yeah. where everybody could get each other fired at any time and so nobody gets anybody fired I think it's like that in any industry. Yeah. I don't think that's just in depth. It's like, like everywhere. Like, it, or like, I mean, working in restaurants, it's always like, whenever I fuck up, it's always the kitchen's fault, not my fault. Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble, but I, I don't really fuck up that often. In plant work, it was always day shift versus night shift. It was always like fucking night shift. Yeah. What were those fucking guys doing all night? <laughs> So, and then you go on day shift and they're like, you know, fucking, you know, and then night shift guys are like fucking day shift dog fucking all day leaves this to us. Like everybody just hates on each other. Everybody's a hero, you know, like it's fucking dumb. I don't miss the work. But on Facebook, too, like, especially like on Facebook, when you're dealing with like comedians, like if I was a non-comedian and I was like, you know what, this pandemic has been horrible. Let me just start following some comedians. You'd be like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, they're not saying anything funny. They're like, all because nothing's it, funny anymore. None of us have our sound exchange they're all, money. I know, they're all conspiratorial, fucking sad. <laughs> you know, just you know, nobody's saying anything funny. It's just like. Oh my God, where do I turn for a laugh? Like, oh, I got to fucking find a black chick who put Gorilla Glue in her hair. <laughs> that is, that was upsetting. I felt so, that looked painful. Did you, did, I didn't see the video. I just saw her face and her hair. Well, so what she, did she, like, what did she, do? she sprayed glue, uh, Gorilla Glue instead of hairspray on her hair to keep it down. And then it literally sealed her head in, like it sealed her hair, like, so I guess it was a good ad for Gorilla Glue. <laughs> like if Gorilla Glue is cool, they'll give her like a campaign, an ad campaign or something. But I guess like- <laughs> Gorilla Glue's cool. 
Because she got everyone talking about Gorilla Glue. But, like, that's just, like, it, it. and then they had to, like, try and get it off because it was literally, like, stuck to her head. It's going to be pretty fucking painful. The fuck and they finally got it off. Because that's not, like, getting gum in your hair. That's, like, your hair is glue. Couldn't you you just, couldn't even like shave it or anything. It was just like a serious, like it's like she laminated her head. Like it was couldn't even on shave. there. Oh my fuck! It was like because she she was just trying to like keep all of her hair down, and it, the rest of it was in a ponytail. But she just wanted it all like smooth on her head, and uh, yeah, like that was. And it was kind of cool because people weren't like being at first. People were like, "What an idiot!" Da da da. But then people started to realize that she was actually in medical distress, and they started to feel bad for her and like. People were really worried about her. And I think she got flown to Los Angeles or somewhere to go to a special spa and they and they got it all out for her. So of, course, of fucking course. Like that's what it takes to do so you know, that's the world. But we, that's how we get stuff nowadays. You have to if fuck it up online. Yeah. Like, and then they'll fly you out. Like right now, tonight, the best thing you could do for yourself is to glue your fucking hair to your head. And then <laughs> And, and just be like, hi, and then you get flown to LA and do some spots at Ice House and. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I've been watching like the Comedy Store documentary and it's a, uh, it's really, it's really good. Um, but like, it's very sad to watch because <laughs> cause stand up's dead for now. Like, it's really hard watching old stand up when, <laughs> like, when you're just like, we don't, get to do that anymore and i don't know when we're gonna get to do that again because regardless of everything it's still gonna suck for the next little while because we're gonna have half capacities and all of this other shit well and that's what's crazy too is like we we for a while lived in a world where everybody was in the same boat like everybody was in a lockdown and like everybody was in this sort of you know situation and now like you see videos all the time of people that are just like fuck it Mm -hmm. it, you know like you know see like a part a boat party in florida like nobody's mm -hmm. wearing a mask nobody's distanced it's a super bowl party and everybody's going nuts and you're just like what the fuck like because they just decided to not care you know like yeah. just decided to not you know fuck it who cares the people that die are over 80 although there are lots uh, of young people dying from this yeah i think like, you know people in their 20s are dying yeah, I mean, yeah, there are people dying and there are people that, you know, and then, I mean, I don't know if they're, we could just open up a renegade comedy club and say, fuck it, and just say, welcome to Florida, bitch, you're, you know, like, Bourbon Street, fuck it, we're doing it. I'm surprised there hasn't like been, more, yeah, I think that businesses are a little bit, like, what happened at that Earl's in Edmonton? Did they just, did the Earl's franchisee just say, fuck it, we're opening? What? I didn't even hear about this. Yeah, there was. A, did you hear about that, Jim? There was like an yeah. Earls in Edmonton that just opened. Well, there was there was video of like a huge group together at the restaurant. I think that was the issue, because restaurants can open now. Oh, right. You can open now, but you can group. only you can only go with people from your cohort, like from your house, and you have to sit a certain amount apart. And it's like, just like my restaurant was supposed to open, but it didn't. Mm. So now we're just waiting. Like, it's crazy. It's just, it's just like, it's, and, and this weather, it's literally at the perfect storm for severe depression. Like, <laughs> I even like talked to my doctor and she's like, cause I'm like, do I need more medication? Because <laughs> this is not working right now. And she's like, well, just monitor yourself, have some juice. <laughs> she didn't say have some juice, but like, but there, but there is no quick fix for mental health. Like, even if you do start taking a new medication, it takes a long time for antidepressants to work the way they're supposed to work. And it's just like, yeah, it's just, and plus like you're stuck in the house with the same people, the same animals, <laughs> like Adam's going <laughs> crazy. Cause I'm, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like we're both going nuts and these dogs can't go outside. My Dottie is depressed. Like she just <laughs> lies around all day and sleeps. And it's just like, Oh, like, it's so sad. It's such a fucking, this weather needs to end. It is. Yeah. It is ending. Yeah. The weather will, you know, it'll get, it'll get, I mean, people, that's the thing. That's why depression is hard because people are like, it'll get better. And then you're like, yeah, but no, mm -hmm. no, it won't. it's going to fucking stay the same. It's going to be shit. It's going to be another fucking version of shit. Right now it's shit. 
but then there's going to, well, don't worry. It'll be soon. It'll be minus 15 and you'll still be fucked. <laughs> and don't forget to wear, don't forget to double mask you fucking. Oh, you, I know. Are, and now they're telling us to double mask. mask? And so now I can wear a single mask and still be viewed as an anti-masker. <laughs> now I'm an anti-double I know, masker. This is thing. Look at these fucking. Like you we, go to an anti, we should start an anti-double mask rally where we just wear one mask to this <laughs> rally and we're fucking vehemently against double masks. The Gestapo's coming to make sure we're wearing two masks, triple masks, quad masks. Holy shit. We're just gonna have to wear helmets enclosed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, ridi it's ridiculous. Like it really is like it. Cause like there is no light at the end of this tunnel. Even with vaccines and stuff, there's no light at the end of this tunnel. I don't see a light at the end of this tunnel. And I don't see what's gonna happen after all of this. Like. I mean, like, comedy is dead. Like, our career is dead right now. And it, we can probably revive it a little bit, but it's going to be limping. <laughs> it's going to have a bad limp. Yeah, there's, well, I mean, the problem is it's going to be, you know, shitty money for a while. Like, it'll be like, you know, it'll start up again, and then everything will be half capacity, half money, half, you know, half everything, right? And the, the way comedy's always worked is like once there's a reason to trim the dollars, the dollars yeah. won't go back up. Like, the, well, you know, like, so like, this is the last thing this industry needed where the money had stayed the same since 1981. Yeah. Regardless of inflation, regardless of anything, the money in comedy has stayed the same basically since fucking 1980. Yeah. And now here's a perfect reason to trim the dollars because we're coming out of a pandemic. And then once the pandemic is over, we might as well float between the new money and the old money. That's totally true. Because remember in like 2008, when they had that, we had that huge recession or whatever, that huge, like everything burst. And I remember most of the Yucks clubs used to be either from Wednesday to Sunday, like Edmonton was Wednesday to Sunday. And most of the clubs were open like most of the week. But then they shut it, they went down to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they went down to one show and then they were like, oh, we're just doing this until everything recovers. And they never went back. They never went back to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, I don't think I had a, uh, a Sunday night show at a Yuck Yucks since 2008. Like, they never went back because they, because, you know, they fought, they got it. They got it. They're like, yes, we only have to do one show a night and pay our staff for one show and pay our comics for one show. And then there you go. They go. <laughs> You got it, and it never came back. Remember, Mississauga Yak Yaks was like, two, was like an eight show weekend, and then yeah. it went down to literally a two show weekend. Wow. Yeah, people kind of stopped coming, right? I guess, mm -hmm. like you know, the, it was it wasn't really necessarily like a Yuck Yucks thing. It was just sort of like, I wonder what it was. It was just sort of, I guess, like Netflix, and you know, but that's not true. That's like such a Yuck Yucks thing to say. That's like because. The comic strip was still doing well. They were still open seven days a week. Yeah, but even their numbers really went off a cliff. You know, but like, this is the, I still remember weekends there, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they would be packed. Even just after, even like 2009, 2010, they'd, be, they'd still be packed on the weekends at least. Enough yeah. to do two shows Saturday, two shows Friday, you know, I mean, and... We definitely live in a world now where like if you want to fill it you got to bring in somebody people know mm -hmm. you know it's going to have to be somebody who's a draw to fill it if you're not well, now you're right there are so many options there are literally so many yeah. options but i don't like uh i just wonder how long it's going to be until live music can come back and things like that like it's it's so funny yeah, that they just built rexall <laughs> they used it for one year and now it's just like just sitting there yeah and we'll get you know like i just want karaoke to come back you know those <laughs> you just are, want to go sing some those, journey those are the forgotten fucking victims of the entire pandemic is karaoke <laughs> hosts <laughs> the lowest form of live entertainment possible where you're like hey amateurs you do it <laughs> you know but i love a karaoke host that takes himself very seriously like mm. they always all right, we're going to start a new rotation. I'm going to start it off. <laughs> Crazy. Anybody want to sing? Yeah, I like how they they always kick it off. Like, hey, anybody want to sing? Like, as if they don't want to sing. Like, as if they don't. Hey, like, you know, they they just fire it up immediately. Like, does anybody else want to? Okay, looks like it's a slow night. Won't you take me to? Like, they just. 
immediately go into their three go-to tracks and none of them can really sing so they just have three songs that they can kind of pull off do you think that a karaoke host ever got a bj in a back alley because this girl wanted him to bump up her her blondie song i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if there was situations where the girl was like just one more and then he's like sorry this is it like we don't i'll i'll blow you for one chance to sing. One chance to sing to four people left in this bar. Oh my God. Well, I the saddest comedy story, I, one of them was, um, I don't even know if I've told it before, but when there was a karaoke night at Bailey's in Fort McMurray, mm-hmm. it was like a comedy night and then karaoke would come on after. Yeah. And there was 10 people there for the comedy night and there was 30 people waiting outside for karaoke to start. So there was as so as soon as comedy ended, they opened the door and 30 more people came in to do like it, karaoke was that much more popular than live stand up. Well, because nobody wants to sit and watch people perform today because everybody thinks they're a star nowadays. We should do like a comedy version of karaoke where we're just like comedy okey hosts and we go there and then we're just like, hey, who wants to tell a joke? And then you can either go up, you can either go up and tell your own joke or you can read Carlin off a sheet. That's a thing. Uh-huh. Is it a thing? It was in Niagara Falls. I remember I was there once and they're like, comedy karaoke, come pretend you're Richard Pryor. Like they would do a Richard Pryor act and someone would just stand there and read it out, which is ridiculous because it's like, you have no idea the timing or whatever. You're just sitting there going like, like the stupidest thing ever. Like how bad awesome. of a non-comedian are you that <laughs> you want to do comedy karaoke? That's awesome. So you're stuck there with Dottie and Eugene. Sucking and Adam is still here. He was supposed to go up on Tuesday, but um, he can't go up because they're doing st- I don't know what they're doing, but he's stuck here for another week. But maybe he gets to go up next week. But yeah, it's like literally the first couple days was like, well, what are we going to do? And I'm like, we can't do anything. And and we got like, a couple fights because I'm like, ah, what do you want me to do? Entertain you? Like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, well, this is really boring. I'm like, I know I've been doing this since January. It's very, very boring. It's supposed to be boring. Like, that's the thing is like, uh, the people that are working so hard want to stop working. But then as soon as you stop working, you're like, oh, I'm not bored out of my tree right now. Like I have some purpose. I have some reason to be alive. But right now I have zero purpose. (laughs) I thought I I never thought I'd get to a point in my life where I wanted to go on a road trip to Fort St. John in minus 30 to do two bar gigs. I never thought that would happen. Is but that happening? No, it's not happening. Oh but darn like, it! We we had two shows booked in Fort like in Fort St. John. We had I a show booked in Calgary. And Fort St. John. Yeah, and it's like normally I'd be like, oh my god, minus thirty five, you know. But I was like, I was like, fuck, that would be great to just because yeah, you do, you know, it doesn't matter what your job is if you just don't have it anymore. You're like, well, what the fuck, like. I'm uh, like everywhere I go now, I'm like, well, I, I wouldn't be qualified to do what that person who just gave me Tim Hortons coffee is doing. Like, that's the kind of job yeah. that I'm in line for is like, I, yeah, I could work in industry. I'm the kind of guy that tips over rail cars and <laughs> needs 10 people to give him a hand with a front end loader. And I never took raises at work. Like I never, well, I took raises, but like they would always ask me like, hey, do you want to, you know, take on this new role, this new challenge or whatever? And I'd be like, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> I just, I just stayed at the bottom of the barrel at every job I had. And they'd be like, hey, you seem like a pretty good communicator. We could uh, get you to do this or that. And I'd be like, no, 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 that's absolutely fine. I'm <laughs> totally fine here at the bottom of the barrel um, doing the bottom of the barrel stuff. Was that when you were a comic? Or were you a comic at that point? Yeah, I would have been like, you know, 24, 25. Yeah, I think 30. that's also because I never wanted, like, they'd always be like, do you want to be a shift leader? Do you want to be a store manager? I'd be like, nope, don't want responsibility. No, I want to be able to go to a show in some shitty town and <laughs> on like zero notice. Yeah, now if I got a job, I'd have to be like, okay, like I'm looking to be the head of security at this fucking little sh- fucking shithole. Yeah. And to be because now we're at the age in our life where if we go back to work, we're gonna have people that are way younger than us being our boss. <laughs> that would be yeah. I would basically, yeah, I would have like a 26-year-old being like, hey, old guy. <laughs> Me? 
Like, yeah, there's only one old guy here. Get over here. Hey, when you're chipping ice off of this sidewalk, make sure you get in those creases, okay? Because I noticed you'll chip it pretty good, but then there's those creases and you just let the fucking snow sit there. You got to dig into that. Here, I'll give you a, I'll give you a fucking toothpick and you can get in there and really get into the root. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's going to be brutal. Like, Well, this is why we should, like I said uh, when we were talking, I'm like, we should become real estate agents. You can finally be that we'll get matching blazers we'll be on billboards together we'll be on bus stops together we could have like a the chuckle we'll help we'll make you laugh and we'll sell your house <laughs> we should that totally be, cheese it up i could fuck yeah why not we could go and be remax we'll do remax you know like we'll go into remax and just tell them look my name's perry taranich <laughs> um and this is my partner <laughs> kathleen mcgee former supermodel and we'll sell some homes you can be in i'll just be i don't know what i could do for real real estate it's all real estate's one of those jobs everybody thinks they could do right but you yourself have said you just show people houses it can't be that hard to do that like it's probably hard when you have to do number stuff but well it's cutthroat because there's so many people yeah. that can do it like you can get a real estate license in a week and a half you know let's do it and then you just start saying, hey, you want us to sell this? We'll do it for less. Yeah. Why don't Wait we start our that. own real estate company called We'll Sell It For Less? <laughs> just really there. piss off all the real estate agents. But then you have to go to like trade shows and stuff. Like, I don't know. Having your own booth at a trade show? That'd be the worst. My mom used to take me to trade shows and make me work. What did she, what did she do at trade shows? Well, she was like head of marketing for Alberta culture. So like all the museums around Alberta. So she would dress me up as like a little pioneer and I would just like do something <laughs> as a pioneer child. As a pioneer child. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to stand there and listen to your mother. Yeah. Or she made me do like, a, I, get, I get one of those counters and I'd have to count how many people came to the booth. I mean, I probably got a lot of my charisma and flair from doing that. <laughs> it's been a tough week to work at Bell too. Like they've had, they had the Bell Let's Talk and then they just fucking fired everybody. Like they just- And that one sports everybody. guy was like tweeting, you want to talk? Hey, let's talk. <laughs> I'm jobless they, now. They got, I mean, the, the way that the radio industry works, like, cause it wasn't just the TV people. It was like entire sports radio stations were shut down. It was all sports radio only or some like, there might have been some regular, yeah, there was some regular CTV stuff, like people on television and TSN TV, but they shut three com total, they shut three radio stations completely down and it happens in like a minute. So they're like, they're on air and they're like, okay, we'll be right back. And then they go to commercial and then somebody says, I need to speak to you. Oh my God. And then they're like, okay, the entire station is shut down. And then when it comes back from commercial, it's, it's comedy. Did you it's hear what happened in Vancouver? The first, no. song, the first song they played after shutting it down was Good Riddance by Green Day. By Green Day. <gasps> what the? This is a shit these corporate people are. And it's a comedy. It's going to be a comedy station. So they played like, you know, a few days of music and then they're going to turn it into a comedy station. And comedians were like, oh, that's kind of cool. And it's like, no, it's not kind of cool because it's all American comics. It's not going to be, yeah. it'll just be, it's all done out of the United States. It's like, you know, there's a fucking Tim Hortons I go to in Fort Saskatchewan and they're like, I'm like, fuck, it's kind of cold in here. And they're like, yeah, our heat is controlled in Texas. What? <laughs> and I'm like, what? It's like, you know, that's the world we're living in now. Like every single thing is controlled out of like one room by 10 people, you know? So that comedy station is just going to be like American, it's not going to be any Canadian content whatsoever. Well, no, because look at Bell now. It's like they don't make Canadian content. They just buy American content. It's just all the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> like, it, it's, uh, you yeah, really it's put weird. A, you put a target on your back when you're a corporation that pretends they care about mental health. Like, you don't, you just don't pretend you care. Yeah. Like, don't pretend that you give a shit and then people will leave you alone. But if you kind of like, Bell, let's talk. Like, Hey, everybody tell your story about mental health. And then, you know, when you have to make real corporate decisions, like, you know, destroying the livelihood of 50 people in one second, um, you know, people are going to attack you. 
Did they so, not get a huge government grant too? And they still did this? Yeah, they got like wage subsidies and yeah, for sure they did. It's, but, it's insane. But yeah, like, you know, so you could work at her because uh, I was thinking about maybe I could go in radio and then you're like, fuck, radio is, is a terrible industry. Just mm -hmm. terrible. Like there's no money in it and you could be fired anytime for any yeah. reason. And you're, yeah. also, you're also constantly open to criticism. Like people are just like, you couldn't have a radio show without having like dozens of people constantly tweeting and texting saying, fire this fucking loser and bring yeah. back Katie. Totally. Yeah. Like I remember when, uh, you know, Fred, right? Fearless Fred. Yeah. When he moved to Toronto, he replaced, um, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he actually ended up, I don't know if he overdosed or if he killed himself, but people were sending Fred hate mail just because he replaced them. Like, mm -hmm. and they didn't even hear him or know him, but they were just like, fuck you. You're the reason this happened and all this stuff. And it's just like, people are nuts. <laughs> Yeah, so you're not making, I mean, he was probably making pretty good money and probably is now too. Like, you know, if, yeah. you, if you're doing shit in Toronto. Oh, yeah, he's he's fine. But like, okay. I mean, but I'm saying that and then I realize that I call um, Jason Kenny a piece of shit online at least three times a day. <laughs> but oh there's a different, God. you can, politicians are fair. This is why I think politicians are fair game above anyone else because they are elected by people. Because people are the ones that gave them their jobs. So now we can we can talk shit about them if we want to. And it's sort of the deal that you make, right? When you become a politician, especially a high, you know, like a high profile politician is most of these people are making, you know, 225000 a year. And when they retire, they're going to make 140000 a year on their pension. And they're worth $12 million somehow. You know, like yeah. I mean, Jason Kenny's always been a public servant, and he's pro he's he's worth like you know many millions of dollars. Like, how does that happen? Because he's not so, married, he doesn't have kids. <laughs> he probably doesn't give a shit. He probably doesn't give a shit about you know people slagging him off. He's just like ah, oh, a bunch of fucking liberal crybabies. Kathleen, yeah, oh, absolutely. Blocked Kathleen. <laughs> I didn't get blocked by him, but I got blocked by that the one that's like. You don't know if he's 15 or 30 and he would and he was like uh there was a picture of him wearing a, a mega hat and it came out that he like was down and like supporting and campaigning for Trump. And all these people were like, Who is this loser? So people started tweeting at him and he kept blocking. The second you tweeted that picture, block, 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 block. <laughs> it was so funny. So That's you, why I don't yeah. like blocking people because if you block somebody, then that's the next thing they do. Look at this pussy, can't even take it, had to block me. And I'm like, I don't even want to deal with that. Well, how did you, like, so you deactivated Facebook? I just deactivated, I didn't delete it, but I just like turned it off. Cause I'm just like, I, of all the social media, it's my least favorite. Because it's like, you post one thing and it's just like, you're, you're in for it. You're in for fights in your thread. And it's just people just bickering constantly and it's, it's at least with Twitter, you don't have to read all of the comments. Like, yeah. you know, you don't see all the comments and stuff on other people's tweets, but like Facebook, some people sit on Facebook all day long and fight. And it is just, I mean, I'm already fucked up enough. I don't need to be like that. Yeah. I found that when I was doing things on Facebook, like when I was posting, um, you know, statuses, yeah, I would have, I would have the same three people that would chime in with a contrary position every time. And I was yeah. just like, I don't need this. Like every time I post something, these same three people are going to be like, well, actually that's not accurate, you know? And it's like, yeah. well, I don't hear from you ever. Like you mm -hmm. never comment on any status in an affirmative way. You never like any of my posts. You just wait for me to say something that you don't agree with. And then, you know, and it's like, I don't know, I guess that's what Facebook's supposed to be, but I just was like, I'm out of this game. I'm out of it. Yeah. I still have like my page and stuff so I can share a show. Cause my thing was like, well, I need it for self promotion. And I'm like, no, you don't. What are these people coming out to see you just cause you posted on Facebook. And also when people come out to see me it, at, when I'm at like the clubs, it doesn't matter how many people come see me. I don't get paid extra money if I bring 20 people out. So like, and that's the problem with the clubs now is they've made absolutely no incentive. So it's just like, well, I'm not going to force people to come out if I don't, if it doesn't change what I make. 
Yeah. Well, a lot of, like a lot of times if I get, you know, if you get hired by um, clubs or whoever, like a lot of times they'll have a social media team, you know, so I have to have some social media because they'll have social media people that will yeah. contact you and say, Hey, I need you to share this on Twitter. Hey, I need you to share this on Facebook. And then if you don't, they'll get a hold of you like a few days later and say, Hey, I noticed that you didn't tweet about it. I noticed you didn't put that on Facebook. So it's like, okay, well, this is just part of the game. I have to post this stuff yeah. when, you know, um, it's not for more money. It's just for like, well, look, if you're not going to tweet this, if you're not going to put this on Facebook, then we probably won't hire you again. Yeah. Well, it, it, but Facebook, like, is I'm not going to not use it. Like I'll still use it to sh for promotional purposes, but just mindlessly scrolling through Facebook was like messing with my brain. And like, I haven't even really been on any of the social medias that much as, as much as I used to. Cause it's just like, I've got, I've come to the point where I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> like what if, what the fuck why am I posting another picture of my face like and people are liking it like I don't understand like I don't know I'm just like this fucking pandemic has really flipped me for a bit. Even, like remember last time we were talking and I was like oh I, yeah I don't really watch comedy and then I was like well maybe that's like why my mental health has deteriorated so much and like so this week I was like I'm gonna start watching a fucking comedy show like I just like yeah. I just started watching Parks and Rec Yes. I'm like just to f just for something to it was like maybe this is the reason why I'm a terror like uh, my mental health is awful because like hey let's see what's either happening in the news today about mm -hmm. death and destruction and terror or let's look at some history of yeah <laughs> destruction and terror from the past oh and yeah. then let's watch a show about death and destruction and horror from the future potentially <laughs> I think I'm exactly like where you are Let's like watch. I've, let's watch something about climate change and how we only have eighty years left before humanity's wiped off the earth. Let's watch something about a pandemic and how we're lucky COVID nineteen is it doesn't kill many people and the next one's going to be fucking off the hook. Yeah, the sequel to COVID nineteen is going to be just amazing. I agree with you. I've started watching comedies again too. Like I was watching mostly serial killer movies, documentaries, everything. And then I'm like, I gotta watch something funny. And I started watching Superstore. It's funny. Superstore is a great show. I didn't even realize how good it was. Like, it's a really, really good show. I would recommend watching that one next because it's super. It's like 20 minute episodes. Like, it's easy. And it like clearly has. It's clearly helped. Yeah, everything's great. <laughs> it's clearly taken the edge off. And the, and the other thing I hate about depression is people always want to check in, and I'm like stop checking in on me <laughs> like I don't, you know but like i'm just seeing how you're doing i'm like i'm i'm stuck in my house i'm miserable what do you want me to say <laughs> like i don't know it's yeah. just like it's yeah leave us alone <laughs> let us wallow in our depression and if and if we make it we make it and if we don't yeah. we don't <laughs> you're trying to bring me out of this <laughs> that's all i fucking have it's my yeah, best I really, friend. I need it to be summer or warmer. Yeah, it's funny how weather does that. Hey, like it's just one of those. I'm, I'm not. It's not all weather, but it's sort of like when it's in combination with everything else, and then you're in a polar vortex. Yeah. You're just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. this is insane. Nobody sp and then things break down. So like, you know, you're reminded of all these other things like, oh, yeah, my car needs a new battery and anything could go wrong at any moment and my window won't roll up. Like I, the most depressing gig I ever did was I had to drive to Cold Lake and um, I was in a shitty car as always. And I think it was like maybe seven or eight years ago. And for some reason, like I went to a drive through before I went up to Cold Lake, rolled my window down. And then the fuse went, so no. my window was remained down and I couldn't get it to go back up. And it was minus 35 and I had to drive from Fort Saskatchewan to Cold Lake with a window rolled all the way down in minus 35. And when I got there, like I had the chills, I was like ready to pass <laughs> out. And they're like, here he is. Here's the comedian for this evening, Sean Lacomber. And I just have like a bone chill. And I'm like, I, and the, and that was the show where the contact was like, well, I hope you're doing an hour. Like, 
and I'm like, do I uh, do I, I had to stand through like a bunch of memorial services? Like they they had like oh nine my. employees. Who like gets eight. a comic? Oh my god. They always think it's a good idea. They're like, well, Terry and Frank are dead, and uh, you know, we've had a hell of a bad year, and here he is, Shane LaCrombean. <laughs> Make us chuckle. Oh. And then I'm like, how much time do you want me to do? And she's like, well, an hour. And I'm like, oh my God, an hour. And it just, it wasn't good at all. And she was standing by the stage with, I could see she had a stopwatch. Oh my God. You had a stopwatch around her neck. But would you rather be where you are now or would you rather be doing that gig? I don't know. <laughs> see, very, that's how fucked up this is because you were actually thinking about difficult. it. Well, because that was seven or eight years ago when I just didn't have the material for that kind of environment. Like it was just like, you know, I had a bunch of dead, dead joke, dead people jokes. <laughs> but they were of course gonna be like, oh, ooh, oh. So that's what it was. It was a bunch of ah ooh ees. Ah ooh ees. I don't know. Um, I think my mouth is purple. From that little sucker? Or did you yeah. want to talk about our we actually sold out to corporate America, didn't we? We did. We got a sponsor. <laughs> and it's a really that. great sponsor because it's something we can really use. Uh it's called Northern Queen and they make edibles. They make like marijuana infused edibles. And uh they're giving us a bag a week. Woo. We'd be so high. We're so <laughs> they're giving us them all a bag a week. And then and they gave us scratchy tickets too. Oh my God, that's so yeah. nice. And they're also doing a 15% discount. We have to come up with a coupon code every week. So you, what word should it be this week? Um, depression. Depression, okay. <laughs> the, secret, <laughs> the secret coupon code is depression. About, that's actually about really good. How about clinical depression? So we'll just, we'll make it shorter. It could be clinical. Oh, Clint. no, I like depression. No, we could, it could be check in. Let's check in on. <laughs> check in could be. You wanted to be check in? Check in. Okay, okay. Check, check in. Up. And they can ship anywhere in Canada. And if you deliver, they deliver for free in Edmonton on Fridays. The food, the stuff is amazing. I'm starting yeah. to already get high. That sucker I just ate was a 25 milligram sucker. It's perfect. Well, she's and actually we like, also... she's actually like a chef. Yeah, she's a red seal chef. Oh, yeah. And the like you know how you eat like edibles and you're like like you have to choke them down because they just taste awful. None of this stuff tastes awful. Like we have these um she made these like cupcake things and they have literally like cream inside of them and they're 25 milligrams each. I ate a whole puck the other night and I had a great night. <laughs> I had a great night. The thing I like about those, the thing I like about those is um, they're very consistent. You know, like sometimes somebody's like, here, eat this cookie. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, but yeah. these ones, like, you know exactly what you're eating. They're very consistent. And you know exactly what trip you're in for when you eat one. So if you're like a light user, they're perfect. Mm -hmm. Or a heavy and user, they're, whatever, they're, right? They're re really reasonably, crap, I had a whole... This is how organized I am. I have a whole list of products. They even have like a green out, anti-green out thing I saw. Really? So like if you're, so if you are somebody that goes too overboard, then you can get it. It's only like 25 bucks. I think, but where the fuck did I put that? This is, oh, there it is. See, it, the sucker is working. <laughs> but they have, what is it called? Green out spray. It's a mini spray, 200 plus sprays. It's 25 bucks a bottle and it helps really? counteract the effects of THC to relieve anxiety. Wow. So if you get anxiety, you should get this one. But seriously, like everything is around, like it, it, it's super, super like reasonable. They're gummy worms. I love their gummy worms. You can get 12 for 30, like Northern Queen. They're our new sponsor. They're on Facebook. And if you order from them this week with the code check in, you get 15% off and they can ship anywhere in Canada and they deliver in Edmonton on Fridays for free. This is, just, this is going to be just like our relationship with K4 Financial where after three weeks, they were, they're like, there's They were so funny. They were like, when I went to go pick up the gift bags, they were like, 
Well, feel free to rag on us and blah. And I'm like, oh, all of our sponsors, we do not make them sound good. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> well, no, I actually like Northern Queen and it's yeah. a good product. K4 Financial is a good product, but I don't have any. It's not like I can go and get, you know, like I don't need money. services. <laughs> I I, yeah, I have no money to use it. That's why I think this is a good sponsor for us because seriously, like if you eat edibles, these are the best edibles. Like seriously, they don't, they taste good. They're creative. They're, they're potent. And you're, and Sean's right. Like it's exact. Like every time I have a sucker, I'm like, I know it's going to be a great time. Yeah. And I didn't even know there was green out spray that was, you could have green out spray. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was either. That's why I, when I saw them, like, that's such a great thing. Cause I, I greened out hard once in Victoria and I vomited in the streets, <laughs> but. Greening out is one of the worst. It is a terrible feeling. It is the I, worst I, feeling. Just freaking out. I used, I used to get it like when I was drunk, I'd be drunk and then I would smoke a joint or yeah. take a edible, and then I'd feel amazing for about 23 minutes. And then I'd be like, I gotta go. I got to yeah. go home. I got to go home. I don't feel very good. And it was awful. Yeah. Greening out is not fun. It, um, but it, it takes a lot to green out. There was one time when I woke up in my bed in a baseball jersey. Somebody had dressed me. I must have puked in my the clothes that I wore to the party. I puked in. And the, oh only, God. the only clothes that the guy had to send me home in was his baseball uniform. <laughs> oh my god he had like a men <laughs> he was a, he was a, he played men's league baseball so he dressed me in his men's league baseball uniform and it was so tight that between the buttons there you could see skin oh my god you could just see huge patches of skin between and then skin tight baseball pants so you and I had to I walked home <laughs> you just imagine me in like drunk in a skin tight baseball Were you wearing cleats pants. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't know what my parents thought of it. They must have been like, oh my God. You don't guy, play baseball. That's <laughs> a train wreck. <laughs> they also gave us scratchy tickets, so I'll scratch them and let you know if we've won anything. <sighs> my special checker is on my phone, and my phone is what's recording right now. So I actually have to manually do that's another thing manually checking these fucking. This. I'm sick of everything. <laughs> You're having a tough week. Yeah, yeah, it's been a rough one. I and I don't think we won. No. You know, it would be <laughs> this. This would be the most hilarious time for us to win ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh my God! What kind of like? What would happen? I bet you. We'd probably have to give him twenty bucks. <laughs> that is a dilemma. Because she gave us three. Where's Sean? Did Sean leave? No, I'm here. Oh, he's here. <laughs> you guys, I'm high on this thing. Sean leave. <laughs> Sean leave? It, All right, bye. Like, look, look at this smoke person. Like, every, I was so down before, but now I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> now take some green out spray so you can get depressed again. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired of being depressed. I need you to prove the effectiveness of green out spray. By taking some right now and then uh, maybe crying in five minutes. Yeah. Well, I'll have to get some for him because I didn't get any. But I would love to see if it works. But who wants to end a high? Nobody. Like, I guess if you're barfing and wearing baseball uniforms around. But yeah. I don't want to ever get high. I mean, <laughs> okay, this is really. I be high. All I want is that. She gave us three. This is really good radio. Just do oh. one. Okay, I did two. <laughs> I don't think we went on that one either. And I'll save the other one for next week. <laughs> How long have we been chatting for? Uh, about <laughs> 50 minutes. Oh, my God. 50 minutes. That's all right. Oh. You have We're any down on our... Do you, you have any uplifting stories to fucking... <laughs> this up with you know what we should just do a renegade podcast where we just meet at gyms anyway say fuck it just yeah like i'm sick of this like i'll wear a mask i'll even double the mask 
just no, 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 fuck it. No mass, no nothing. We just do it like a Super Bowl party, <laughs> you know, just not even spaced out, smoking the same joint. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Just be that. That's how that's how we get our listeners up is we get a bunch of people that are like, yeah, I'm tired of all these fucking Zoom podcasts. Yeah. When are they going to take a chance? When are some brave comedians going to start doing it live again? Yeah, let's be those brave comedians. <laughs> yeah. Let's Sean's take like, oh, I'm going to get kicked off the board. <laughs> Not Sean, Jim. <laughs> Jim was going to get kicked off the board. Off the, board. <laughs> the, youngest man on the board. The youngest man in the history of the board. That's right. And also the sponsor was like, do you, does he really live in an old people's home? <laughs> I was like, well, technically it's not, but it not is. officially, not officially. <laughs> it's a, it's a hospice. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a place where a thirty-five-year-old can feel young, very young. <laughs> I've never, I've been really feeling old lately, like really. We're going to be taping. We're going to be taping this in a fucking homeless shelter in a month. <laughs> we're gonna be coming at you live kathleen and sean coming at you live from a fucking homeless shelter <laughs> it's I been like a it. rough week i lost my house <laughs> we're, still, we're still doing the pod and by northern <laughs> queen everybody uh yeah our sponsor here at the homeless shelter <laughs> the mustard's coming at you live from the mustard seed Things well, have been terrible. Me and Adam. If we have to be up. in a homeless shelter, then we'll be the best darn homeless shelter podcast you can get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. We'll be bunking up. There's no spacing in a homeless shelter. No. They were saying that they should um, give homeless people vaccinations first. And I'm like, yeah, you should. Because they're like the most, like they're just, they uh, they don't, they're, they're at the, a lot high risk. I can't even think. They're the most vulnerable group. Yeah, like. I saw pictures of homeless people like living still in tents in Edmonton. So I guess things it's are- like right now? Yeah, like still oh my like, God. Oh, I'm just in a tent here. Cause you can only <gasps> stay in a homeless shelter for so long. Like you get a certain amount of time and then it's like, all right. I don't understand why they don't, like what happened to that, that thing at the conference center? Is that over? I don't know. No, I think- Cause I know that they open, it's so such a weird rule. They open the subways for them to sleep in at night. Like they can sleep in the subway stations when it's like minus 25 or colder, but minus 24, you're on the street. <laughs> yeah, fuck. So at least we're not there. We're not, not yet. No, we're not there yet. That's how we get to feel good about ourselves is reminding ourselves that we're not homeless yet. Yeah, that's exciting. And I've not been drinking a lot. No, you cut down on drinking? I just don't feel like drinking because it's sad. Because <laughs> it's just like me. Blah. Okay, and then I get too drunk, and then it's stupid. That's why I like Northern Queen products. <laughs> okay, now you're just being a fucking shill. <laughs> I want to be one of. <laughs> I want to be Bob Barker's beauties. I wanted to be one of those when I was a little girl so bad. Like I had no aspirations of like astronaut. I wanted to be a waitress at Chi Chi's and I wanted to be a spokesmodel on Price is Right. <laughs> Those were my dream careers when I was like nine years old. Chi Chi's waitress and uh, the other one. <laughs> so you had shitty dreams and they didn't even come true. They didn't even come true. <laughs> I guess, I guess like comedian is like kind of. It's middle of the road characters. it's yeah. between a chi chi's waitress and, and yeah you're yeah it's like right in the people. middle you landed somewhere in the middle yeah yeah that's that's not so bad <laughs> you're, a, you're a joke server that works out of town <laughs> you know what i think we should do regularly i think that you should write astrology for people <laughs> like you every every week you know how we want to do something regularly mm-hmm. Well, I could write. Can you yeah, write a horoscope? I could. Yeah, I'll you write like, horoscopes if you're. Yeah, like if you're. A, what are they? What are the horoscope? What are the signs again? Asparagus. Oh, and, like <laughs> asparagus. Exactly, just like that. No, you should like definitely do and just do a broad one. Be like, well, this week Pisces is really gonna be tired, but next week Scorpio is gonna be on top of the moon. I think you could do Scorpio it. Scorpio move. Such a Scorpio. <laughs> 
You're such a Scorpio. You can't, you can't be as, as astrology during a pandemic doesn't fucking work. But I could <laughs> uh, ask female, ask female uh, Instagram. It works. Okay. I also there was somebody on TikTok that's like a medium on TikTok. You know how like they're talking to dead, so they like just film their face and then keep putting up these are messages i've had this week if it means something to somebody great like it's the most obnoxious thing ever because it's like it's, it's very easy to just write a message and then nobody sees it you know what i'm talking about those <laughs> i'm too high i've never been, i mean yeah i've like seen the mediums? mediums and like yeah because yeah. usually they're on crime shows like they give they give psychics too much credit on crime shows like there's always a psychic on the crime show and they always have like an actual thing and everybody writes them off and then they end up being like kind of right and it's like let's get real if you're an actual you know detective and psychics are contacting you it's always bullshit <laughs> it's always bullshit every single time they don't get you any closer to finding the fucking person who killed her like i kind of believe in some stuff but that when i saw that on tiktok i'm like this lady's just saying Sarah, if there's a, this is a message for Sarah. If you have that red scarf, your mom says you look good in it. Like seriously, she'll just like post, like and it's so like so like people are watching it. They're like, I'm just watching for my mom's name and my name together. You know, like it's crazy. Yeah, and I it's yeah, it's like when you go to a fucking store and they're like, you know, you see your name on a there's a hundred mugs and you see your name on one of them and you're like, hey hey. <laughs> They have, a Sean, they have a S-E-A-N Sean mug. That always is an exciting feeling. I don't, I don't know why, but it's always it an is. exciting feeling when you find your... But you have an easy name. Sean? Well... Yeah, Sean. Sean they usually Sean, have it spell spelled it? wrong. Sometimes they spell it incorrectly. They don't spell it my way. Kathleen is an easy one. No, because it's always Catherine or Christine, but it's never Kathleen. Hmm. Jim, you always see a Jim there, right? Yeah, I suppose. So maybe it's more <laughs> exciting for people that don't see their name a lot hmm. to finally find one with their name. Like my friend Jana, that was never on any of those things. No, that is a that is a wacky name. That is a wacky eighties. <laughs> it's not that weird of a name. No, it's not. But it's an eighties. It's an eighties girl name. An eighties girl name. <laughs> Well, this is another great fucking podcast. <laughs> if people listen to this for a pick me up, holy shit. This is the serious episode, to be fair. This was the serious episode. Please contact. This is a, this, this is a very special the, episode. Well, what the hell would, like, even if there was like a mental health hotline, what are they going to help with? You know, like, hi there, stranger. Uh, I'm having a hell of a time continuing to live. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, let me just check my notes here. Um, hang in there. You've got a lot to live for. <laughs> Is that the one time I, mean? I ever called the suicide hotline? It was a complete waste of my time. <laughs> what did they say? Did they did they say it was literally like they just would re-ask my question? They're like, Well, how are you feeling? And I'm like, Well, I feel like I want to die. And then they'll be like, And why do you feel that way? And I'm just like, This isn't helping. How is this helping me? It's not helping me. Living's terrible. Well, why is living terrible? Uh, like, does the suicide hotline work? Because people are like, fuck this. And they just hang up. It's just, I mean, I wouldn't want to work there. Me neither. You know, I would not want to work your, there. You got your headset on, and then you got one call, and then the, I think, he, and then, you know, you're like, okay, bye. I think he's going to do it. I honestly think that guy's going to kill himself. Okay, line two, you're up. Um, don't do it. Hang in there. Um, people love you. <laughs> they would miss you. And um, you don't have life insurance. So no one would get any money when you're dead. Okay, that's all the time I have. Bye. Next caller, you're up. And then you call a suicide hotline. Your call is important to us. It's also an awkward way to, you can't hang up on them ever. She was like, okay, well, I'm going to go now. And you're like, well, are you going to be okay? I'm like, I'm going to go and, and what, hang up and on what, the suicide and What do you mean you're going to go? And go where you're going to go? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I don't know.
Yeah. Don't call him, you know? Don't call him. It's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> your friends to check in. Get your friends to check in on you. Yeah. Oh, well. Check this in. Just question. like the password. This is in uh, Northern Queen picked a great podcast yeah. to start sponsoring. <laughs> it's just absolutely fucking the saddest podcast ever. <laughs> hey, hey, fifteen percent off if you if you check in. It's the check end. In. Oh my god! I yeah. should probably do next week. We should probably put the code on earlier. So people can get to, get the code and leave if they need to. There's not going to be a next week. This is it. <laughs> Fucking done. This oh is how, my this God. is how we wrap it up. This is the final goddamn episode of Dead Baby. <laughs> <laughs> we should call this episode a very special episode. The final goddamn episode. <laughs> this is the final fucking. It's done. We're done. We'll never do it again. <laughs> we need to. We need to be in person. Like next, I week can... it'll just, next week it'll just be Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it'll just be Jim at his hospice green screen. <laughs> explaining explaining that Kathleen and Sean are no longer involved. <laughs> or, no, or no longer with us. <laughs> no longer with us. They called the suicide hotline and it didn't really help. Yeah. <laughs> the person on the other oh. side of the phone agreed. If we're going <laughs> to... Just promise well, you we, made a good choice. We'll kill our we we'll kill ourselves together. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, as realtors. I'll film it. <laughs> as realtors. <laughs> we'll wear our blazers. <laughs> yeah, we'll just fucking start a car in the garage of the home we're trying to sell and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even make one goddamn sale. Oh my god. Oh, well, well, that was fun. Well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This this, and going to the dog park are the only things that make me laugh. So it's fun, right? Yeah. Like going to the dog park is nice. And then this once a week is like, I actually laugh. And then I go back to being like, I hate everything. <laughs> uh, my old friend. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thanks a lot for being on your own final podcast. <laughs> thanks for being on the final podcast. <laughs> <laughs>